I think the most common response I get to discussions of pornography, in a sense, is fear. Uh, I think men are afraid to talk about it because at some level we know that our own use of pornography is a signal of a problem. That when we are drawn to mediated sexually explicit images, when we sit down in front of a computer and masturbate to those images, we know there's something wrong happening. We know there's a problem, but we're afraid to talk about it. So I think often men are, are afraid of what the discussion of pornography might reveal about themselves. For a woman to look honestly at the contemporary pornography industry is to recognize that day in and day out you are being constructed and presented to men as this degraded object. And that, I'm not a woman, I don't know what that feels like, but I can imagine that it doesn't feel good. The second part of being a woman, especially being a heterosexual woman in this culture, is the recognition that men in your life, whether it's fathers, brothers, uncles, boyfriends, husbands, uh, are often using this material. Often that use of it is hidden. There's not an open discussion of it in, in a lot of relationships. But I think there's a certain fear about if I examine this topic, it's going to force a confrontation with men in my life. And that can be very scary when one wants to maintain relationships. So I think, when I think about the, the topic of pornography and what it invokes in people when that subject comes up, I think for a lot of people it's, it's a fear. Where will this lead me? Not just where will it lead me in the discussion of pornography, but where will it lead me in the discussion of sexuality more generally? Where will it lead me in the discussion of gender and power? Pornography is scary to people, I think, in part because it opens up a whole set of questions about how we've been socialized to be men and women, how we've been socialized to be sexual, what we find pleasurable. These are not simple questions that one deals with purely intellectually. They're very emotional. Uh, they're emotional for all of us, and that fear is understandable. All storytelling in a culture is both a reflection of the values of the culture and a vehicle by which those values are shaped. And that's true of mass media as much as any storytelling. So when we look at any media genre, whether it's Hollywood movies or network television or pornography, we can see that those media and the stories being told reflect the cultural values and also shape the cultural values. In capitalism, the desire to maximize market share and profit means that the shaping of values will tend toward um, the systems of power that exist. And so in pornography we see this clearly, that the pornographic films reflect the values of a male-dominant patriarchal society. Women are routinely objectified and presented as objects for the sexual pleasure of men. But because the customer base of contemporary pornography is overwhelmingly male, as the pornographers try to increase their profits, they're going to intensify that message and the intensification of that sexualization, objectification, and degradation of women in pornography then helps shape the culture even more. So we see this reciprocal effect. Um, to what degree does that have an effect on men's attitudes and behaviors? That is, does the flooding of a culture with this kind of pornographic material lead to changes in the way men think and then changes in the way they act? Well, that's a difficult question to answer with any definitive clarity, but we certainly have reasons to be um, concerned, reasons in fact to be terrified that this flood of overtly misogynistic and often very racist um, sexualized imagery is having an effect on, especially on younger people who are more exposed to more of it than ever before. Well, traditional obscenity law, the kind of law that's in every state and at the federal level, defines obscenity as material that is uh, a vi in violation of community standards on sexuality. And those laws give the government the right to prosecute. But we can see that even though those laws exist, there's an increasing amount of pornography in the culture. That is, those laws are not 
used in a uniform manner. That's because there is often not the political will to use them. So we can see that obscenity laws are inadequate to deal with the question. From a feminist point of view, obscenity laws are also inadequate because they put the power to define what is or is not problematic in the hands of the government, and that tends to mean in the hands of men. What the feminist movement proposed in the 1980s was to shift from the arena of criminal obscenity law to a civil rights framework that would empower women and others hurt by the production or use of pornography to pursue civil suits, to pursue damages, to not criminalize any particular kind of, a, of expression, but to give the people who are harmed by it a chance to redress that harm. I think it's important to first of all recognize that there is no simple solution and there is no so solution to that outside of addressing other questions about misogyny and patriarchy. That is, pornography is a problem but it's part of a larger constellation of problems that have to do with the fundamental assertion of male dominance in the culture. So if one wants to ask how do we solve the porn question, how do we address the porn problem, my first response would be you do it in the context of an overall progressive politics that takes very seriously questions of gender and questions of race, that looks at the economic motivation in capitalism for people to produce this kind of material, and tries to, to argue not just for a change in the law about pornography, for instance, but tries to argue for a different way of understanding what it means to be human in society. Now that's a big task not to be completed in this week, this month, this year, or our lifetimes. But I think to really hold progressive values, one has to take the long view. It's clear that in this culture, uh, a patriarchal culture still very much infused with white supremacist values, an economic system organized around the profit motive, we are not going to stop the flow of misogynistic racist pornography overnight. It may be that there's no way to stop it in that sense outside of a real revolution in the culture.